एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अनदर चैलेंजिंग बट इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक हेल्पफुल फॉर ऑल द मेडिकल प्रोफेशनल्स फ्रॉम नर्सेस द हार्ट ऑफ हेल्थ केयर कीप लर्निंग कीप ग्रोइंग माय नेम इज शहनाज एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न आईवी फ्लूइड कैलकुलेशंस ओके फ्लूइड कैलकुलेशंस व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल द मेडिकल प्रोफेशनल्स टू हैव अ क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ इट टू बी एबल टू डू इट एक्यूरेटली ओके बिकॉज Fluid management is an essential aspect for any patient admitted to the hospital. Hospitalized patients often have conditions that impair their ability to regulate their hydration status. And proper fluid management is very crucial. And as medical professionals, if we are not able to do proper fluid management, it can cause significant morbidity and mortality. So that's the reason the type of fluid that we are giving to the patient and the amount of fluid that we are giving to the patient is very crucial to be noted okay so each patient's condition is different each patient requirement is different and we have to calculate it properly so that's the reason i told that it is challenging because uh, you know will not have the calculator in hand or the mobile in hand all the time to do it okay so we need to do it on a paper using pen and paper manually okay so that's the reason i called it challenging and sometimes we have to do it mentally we may not have pen and paper also available at all the times some of the drugs we have to calculate mentally okay and uh, uh, interesting because uh, you know it will uh, recall it will refresh your memory regarding all the four basic arithmetic operations that you have learned in your school okay addition subtraction multiplication and division so if you are well versed with this four basic arithmetic operations we can do it accurately okay because mathematics may it be in nursing or any other field it is all about logic and some standard rules and regulations and formulas to be followed okay so let's get started before moving ahead i would really appreciate that if you are new to my channel please subscribe my channel and if you find the content helpful and easy please do like and share my videos okay so let's get started fluid calculations yeah before moving ahead uh, please uh, understand you may come across this uh, terms frequently okay so please understand what it is gtt gtts okay so you will come across this way yeah gtts per minute okay gtts is nothing but it's a latin word which means gutte okay which means drops okay gtt is singular which means gutta or drop and gtts it's a plural word which means gutte drops okay so gtts per minute is nothing but drops per minute so you write it as gtts per minute or drops per minute it is the same it's a shorthand okay technique which is used in medical field mostly okay so gtts per minute is nothing but drops per minute so gtts stands for gutte which means drops plural and gtt stands for gutte gutta which means drop okay singular fine now to calculate the iv flow rates iv fluids are mostly prescribed as ml per hour okay so you might have seen written in the prescription or in the stat orders or in the drug chart as so and so fluid at 100 ml per hour or 80 ml per hour 50 ml per hour 60 ml per hour based on the condition and the requirement of the patient okay so the volume per hour to be administered is calculated as uh, uh, the flow rate is adjusted based on the drops per minute okay so there are three ways that usually you will be asked see this uh, fluid calculation video is helpful for students as well as for the nurses working in the for the medical professionals working in the hospital any healthcare setting okay because uh, you will be asked questions related to it and you may be asked to calculate ml per hour or drops per minute or the infusion time okay so you have to read the question properly and try and understand what exactly they want you to find out and do it appropriately apply the proper formula and calculate it accurately okay so let's see how to do it here first to find out uh, or to calculate ml per hour okay to calculate ml per hour ml stands for milliliter okay ml per hour the formula is total infusion volume in ml divided by total infusion time 
okay so this is the formula for finding it out finding out ml per hour total infusion volume in ml divided by total infusion time in hours okay so let's see some example doctor advised to give 2 liters of ns over 4 hours for a patient with fluid volume deficit how many ml per hour you will give now okay so you have to calculate see first thing is regarding which fluid you are talking here ns that is normal saline and what is the total infusion volume 2 liters and uh, what is the total time 4 hours okay so these are the main points that you have to get from the question to calculate now you can see here so 2 liters is nothing but 2000 ml yeah 1 liter is 1000 ml so 2 liters is 2000 ml okay and uh, the formula is total infusion volume in ml divided by total infusion time so now if you put this in the formula it is 2000 divided by 4 okay so 4 Five is twenty, and this two zeros you will keep it as it is. So it will be five hundred ml per hour. Okay. So if the doctor has advised uh, for a person who is in hypovolemic shock for fluid resuscitation to administer say two liters of um, NS over four hours, then how much you have to administer? You have to administer five hundred ml in one hour. Okay. Fine. Then let us see one more example. Say doctor advised forty mEq KCl in five hundred mL NS over four hours. So how many mL per hour? So first let us see what are the main things here. Forty mEq KCl that is potassium chloride. What is the fluid? Five hundred mL NS that is normal saline, and the time duration is four hours. So basically five hundred mL NS with forty mEq potassium chloride in four hours you have to give. So how many ml per hour you have to give? You have to calculate. Okay, so let's see. And the formula is same: total infusion volume divided by total infusion time. Okay, so the total infusion volume is 500 ml, and the total infusion time is four hours. Okay, so how you are going to calculate it? 500 divided by four, it is 125 ml per hour. Okay, so this is like you are doing potassium correction for a patient. okay say the patient is having hypokalemia and you are doing potassium correction okay so potassium chloride which is a high risk medication you are, you cannot do give it concentrated you have to dilute it so that's the reason you are diluting it at 500 ml ns and giving it over 4 hours okay through a large bore cannula or an ejv cannulation fine so this is how you will calculate it so you have to be to do all these calculations guys you have to be uh, you know well was with your uh, multiplication and division okay then you can do it very easily then next formula for calculating drops per minute there are few things to understand before moving ahead with the examples okay formula for calculating drops per minute so you have to calculate how many drops per minute so gtts per minute or drops per minute it means the same okay so don't get confused what is gtts gtts per minute or drops per minute it is same and the formula is drops per minute or gtts per minute is equal to total infusion volume into drop factor by total time of infusion in minutes okay so the formula is total amount of fluid to be infused into drop factor divided by time in minutes total time in minutes okay now what is drop factor here drop factor which is also Known as drip factor. Okay, drop factor or drip factor. It means the same. Drop factor or drip factor is nothing but the total number of drops delivered per milliliter of solution. That means the number of drops it takes to make one ml of solution. Okay, the number of drops it takes to make one ml of solution is nothing but the drop factor. Okay, so the drop factor it varies. It varies. by the brand and the type of infusion set okay and uh, you have seen the uh, this one iv set right iv set cover it is always printed on the package of the iv set cover on the infusion set cover at the back side if you can see next time when you are tearing the iv set uh, cover please see at the back side it will be there drop factor will be printed on it 
okay if it's a macro drip set which is used for the adult the drop factor is 10 15 or 20 drops per ml and if it's a micro drip set which is used for pediatrics okay it is 60 drops per ml okay that means 60 drops it takes to make 1 ml of solution and in adults it is macro drip set it is either 10 15 or 20 drops for 1 ml of solution okay so this is drop factor fine so macro drip and micro drip macro drip 10 15 or 20 and micro drip it is 60 drops per ml okay so usually when we are calculating we are following like 20 drops per ml of solution okay fine let us see some examples to understand it better say to for an adult doctor advice to infuse DNS that is dextrose plus normal saline 100 ml per hour so how many drops you will set per minute now doctor advised 100 ml per hour so you have one pint bottle okay one pint is nothing but 500 ml approximately yes so you have a one pint of bottle and you have to give 100 ml per hour so how will you set the drops how many drops per minute you will set so that it goes 100 ml in one hour so the formula is same drops per minute is equal to total amount of fluid to be infused by time in minutes into drop factor so the total amount of fluid to be infused here is 100 ml and the drop factor they are saying it is for adults that means it is macro drip set it is 20 okay and the time is per hour right so it is one hour is equal to 60 minutes okay so now put all this in the formula how you will get it total amount of fluid 100 time in minutes 60 and drop factor 20 so when you divide 100 by 60 you will get 1.666 repeated okay then you have to uh, multiply this what you get 1.66 is repeated into 20 you will get 33.3333 repeated okay so this is division fine and 33.333 uh, uh, 3 repeated if you can round down to 33 okay see after the decimal point the number whatever it is here if it is less than 5 then you will uh, what we say round down to 33 okay if it is 5 or more than 5 then you can round up to the next digit you can make it 34 okay so now because because it is less than 5 you have rounded down to 33 drops per minute okay so if you have to if the doctor has advised 100 ml per hour dns ns rl or any fluid then how many drops per minute you have to set 30, 33 drops per minute okay so you have to adjust with the drip set okay you will count the drops for 15 seconds and then you will multiply it with 4 okay to set the drops per minute let us see one more example to understand it better as you can see here doctor advised to give injection optineuron in 500 ml of ns at the rate of 80 ml per hour okay uh, using a macro drip set so how many drops per minute you will give okay so here the doctor has advised what medicine injection optineuron it is available in an ampule form liquid medication in 500 ml ns okay so we cannot give this medication as direct iv yes im we can give but if you have to give it a iv you have to dilute it okay and at the rate of 80 ml per hour okay and using macro drip set that means the drop factor that we are going to use is 20 okay so let us see how we are going to calculate the formula is total amount of fluid to be infused how much is the total amount of fluid 80 time in minutes how much is the time one hour that means 60 minutes and drop factor because it's a macro drip set it is 20 drops per ml okay so now if you calculate 80 divided by 60 or if you can cut off this zero here zero here then 6 divided by 8 you will get 1.333 repeating okay then multiplied with 20 so you will get 26.666 repeated okay even you do division you will know this okay so because now after the decimal the number what you have is 6 that means it is more than 5 so you will round it up round it up to 27 so it is 27 drops per minute okay so if the doctor has advised 80 ml per hour of fluid then you have to set the drops uh, drop factors 27 drops per minute okay hope you all are not getting bored and hope you all are able to understand it okay so 
every time we may not have the mobile or the calculator in hand we may have to do it on a paper okay so we need to be you know we have to memorize all these formulas and should be able to do the calculations accurately so that we are not uh, you know mismanaging the fluid resuscitations okay then next formula for calculating the infusion time sometimes they will ask you to find out the infusion time means for example if uh, say that 1 liter of fluid has to go at the rate of uh, 100 ml per hour then approximately how many hours it will take for that 1 liter bottle to finish that you have to find it here okay how many after how many hours you have to change the next bottle or the bag okay so that is infusion time and the formula is infusion time that is hours is equal to total volume of total volume to infuse that is in ml divided by ml per hour being infused okay so let us see one example to understand it better say doctor has advised to administer 500 ml of rl that is ringer lactate to be administered at 75 ml per hour how many hours will uh, it pass before you change the bottle or the bag okay so how you are going to do it the total amount of fluid to be infused is how much 500 ml and uh, how many ml per hour it is to be being infused here 75 ml per hour so now if you put it in the formula 500 divided by 75 so you will get it 6.666 repeated so you can round it up to 7 so approximately it will take 7 hours the infusion time is 7 hours approximately it will take 7 hours to administer 500 ml of rl at the rate of 75 ml per hour okay so this is how we calculate uh iv you know fluid calculations okay easy you just have to remember this three formulas okay for to calculate ml per hour it is total infusion volume or amount to be uh, administered divided by total infusion time in hours okay and for finding out the drops per minute it is total infusion volume into drop factor by total time of infusion in minutes and to find out and please remember one more thing for macro drip set the drop factor is either 10 15 or 20 usually we are following 20 drops per ml and for micro drip set it is 60 which is used for pediatrics so when you are finding it for pediatrics here at the place of drop factor instead of writing 20 you will write 60 and you will calculate okay so the main magic lies here first thing is you have to understand in the question what exactly the examiner wants to know or what exactly the doctor has advised understand the question properly and calculate it properly okay put the proper things at proper place in the formula and then calculate it properly okay this should be gone correct okay so that we can do correct fluid management okay and for infusion time it is total volume uh, to infuse by ml per hour being infused okay so these are the formulas that you have to remember to do correct fluid calculations so it is very important it is challenging but very interesting and uh, it is a critical aspect of a patient care very important aspect of the patient care so hope you found it helpful and uh, hope uh, it help you in understanding okay so guys uh, always remember that knowledge is light especially knowledge related to medicine okay it is a blessing i can say okay so share knowledge because it is meant to enlighten self and to enlighten others so learn from each other there is no harm in learning and a true medical professional always remember guys is a lifelong learner so if you keep learning you will keep growing and you will be always providing safe effective and quality care to your patients okay so uh, keep smiling uh, stay strong and stay connected with nurses the heart of healthcare thank you so much for watching